Hello, I'm Landon Schlangen and welcome back to another video. We are going to make the product landing page today. And that is part of the new responsive web design certification or even the uh, legacy responsive web design certification. So either one works, but we are going to do the product landing page today. I already did it once for the legacy one and I'm gonna redo it uh, today to hopefully make a better video. And so it has to be functionally similar to this one right here where they, I guess they're doing selling trombones and they have premium materials, fast shipping and quality assurance, uh, features, how it works, pricing, uh, it scrolls to that section. They also know how to embed a YouTube video. So we'll take a look at how to do that and also have these uh, different items that you can buy or select. Although these don't actually work right now uh, because yeah, it's just the front end. So uh, we are going to be making one that looks like this. So very similar to the other one, except we're going to be doing classic books and we're going to learn a lot of stuff about CSS and some different icons that you can use. And yeah, and some different books that you ought to read <laughs> and let's uh, get started. So we have to make it so that it passes these user stories on free code camp. So there we go, where we have nav bar and headers and all that good jazz. And we also link to a style sheet. And instead of doing it on free code camp, I'm going to be using uh, visual studio code just because uh, there's better shortcuts and you know, it's just easier to work with. So I'm going to open that up and I already have it open. Would you look at that? It's almost like I planned it. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so just like the code where there's an indexed HTML and styles at CSS, we're going to be doing that same thing inside of VS code. Uh, if you want to, you can, uh, just use this or you can get VS code. I would highly recommend getting VS code. And then being able to go live, that's done by going into extensions and looking for a live server. And I already have live server installed, but you would just install this and then you have that thing show up uh, down below. And then you can hit go live, or you can just right click on the index HTML page and be able to go live from there. So let me make that and then get the boilerplate going. Hello. And then I should be able to save this. And then I can right click and do open with live server. And then it should open up a page on 5501. And 120.0.0.1 is uh, localhost. So uh, don't get scared off by that. It's just this page. And there we go. It says hello. So we're reading our document correctly. And we're going to start off with the title, which is going to be FCC product landing page. Ending page, and there we go. And that's our beautiful title, and that will show up uh, on the tab right here. Um, so, like this one, it also has that on the on the tab. All right, so we're going to start with making the nav bar. So, to make such a beautiful nav bar, uh, what is is a header and some other stuff. Let me make this bigger too, um, just so that it's easier to see. So I can increase the size of my font. All right, so in the body, and also, yeah, that's the extension tab, All right? We need a header, first of all. So we're, uh, this is also to pass the free code camp test. We need header, hashtag header for the ID. So uh, using Emmet and VS Code together, uh, it creates shortcuts like that, it's very nice. And then inside of there, we need a nav bar with an ID of nav bar with a dash in between it so here we go there's our nav uh it's just a basically div but it has a little bit more meaning to it because it's nav and then inside of there we're going to add a div with a class of logo container logo container and there we go and then inside this logo container we're going to have our uh, book logo this thing and to get that you can just like look up uh, uh, book logo, I think is what I looked up before and images and I just used this one right here. So I clicked on this and you can right click and open image in new tab and then you just copy this link. Uh, so copy that and then we can go image and then in the source we paste that uh, right there 
and then it should show up. Although it's really big, so I think I need to put a width on it to be like 500, and then it will be much smaller, yeah. Okay, so let's do like 100 maybe, or just 60, and there we go. So it's, it's basically, we want it that small. And I'm gonna be doing that with a class, but, or with an ID selector. So because we need uh, this for the test, so the ID is a header image like that. And the alt is just, I don't know, logo, whatever you want. And there we go. So there's our first part of our nav bar. Oh, that's some layer, <laughs> okay. Making progress. Now, uh, just this classic books next to it. So that's done with a span. So we'll just go span and with a class of the products and it will say classic books. All right, so classic books, beautiful. And now that should show up. Here we go, classic books. Although we still need to style it. All right, so now underneath that, we need these links. So that will go underneath and we will have a ul with a class of nav links and then inside of there we're going to have three li's and three anchor tags as well so we're going to go how do i do this li times three li times three greater than a yeah there we go all right so that creates our li's and then our a tags within those the first href is going to be hashtag features and then inside of there, it will say uh, features, actually. And then also these A tags need a class on them. So I'm gonna go Alt, hold down Alt so for multiple cursors, and I'm gonna add a class to these. And it's going to be a class called uh, nav link. There we go, the singular form. All right, save that. This href is going to be audio, so hashtag audio, and then Right here, it's going to be free audiobook. Audiobook. And then the last one is for sale. So hashtag for sale. Uh, also, just put an underscore between that. All right. And then we'll go for sale. All right, save that. And then it should show up on this one. Yep. So here's our, our links. Now, uh, normally I would just do all the HTML right away, but this time I'm going to do some styling. So let's do that. So to add styles, I need to add a file. So I'm going to open up my files here again. And then we just need to add a styles.css. All right. And then if you're on the free CodeCamp site, it's already there for you. We just have to link to it. So with that, I'm going to do link. And then it goes rel style sheet, href is dot slash styles, not CSS, because we're in the same directory. Uh, the dot slash means that it's in the same directory. You, you don't even need the dot slash, but I like to add it. Uh, also gives me some suggestions when I do that. All right, so save that. Now we can go into styles.css and work on these this nav bar. All right, so first in styles.css, I'm going to add uh, a, like maybe one variable for now, and that's gonna be our white. Uh, color, which is basically, it's just going to be white. So if I go hashtag FFF, that makes white. I can also hover over this and click this to make it HSL. So for this project, I'm going to use HSL values. And then underneath that, we want to get rid of our margin. So I'll go margin of zero quick, just to tighten everything up. And if I save that, yep, tightens everything up. And it, that's how we know that it's using our styles.css. So now I want to grab our uh, let's see your header image. So that would be that books logo thing. And so let's go header image, header dash image, and open that up. And we're going to give it a width of 60 pixels and a object fit of contain, just so that it keeps aspect ratio. And then I can get rid of that uh, width of 60 here on that. And then it should still be, yep, just 60 pixels. All right. And then inside of our nav bar, so we're going to go hashtag nav bar. We are going to have display flex on this so that it goes into a row. Uh, let's see here. It should be in a row, maybe not. And then flex direction of column. You know, we're actually working on this uh, mobile first as well. 
So we're going to design it for a mobile screen before we add the media queries for the desktop screen. All right, so display flex, and then we're going to do flex direction of column. Column, and then we need justify content of space around. Save that. Hmm. I feel like it should change stuff, but maybe not. All right, and then we want align items of center. Save that. There we go. So that centers stuff. And then we need a position of fixed, not relative fixed. And then we need width of 100%. 100%. If I save that, uh, it's still the same, but now we need top of zero. And we need background color of white. Background color of that white that we uh, defined up there. And we're going to be doing that with a var. And then we can just do dash dash white, and that will grab that color for us. And then we can go padding of 10 pixels. All right, save that. Now we need to actually change the look of these links because they're pretty ugly. So to do that, we're going to grab our nav links. So we're going to go nav links. And we're going to get, grab display flex on them. And we're going to do list style of none. List style none. Should get rid of the dots and also put them in a row, just like so. All right. Now we want to grab our nav links a tags. So we're going to go nav links. And then inside of that is the a tags. And we want to get rid of their underline. So we can just do that with text decoration or text decoration none. And that should remove the underline, which it does. And we want to also give them a cool color. And the color is uh, another variable up here, which is going to be the text color. And I'm going to define that as text. And it's going to be an HSL value of 228, uh, 12%, and 48%. All right, save that. And then I can use that down here. So I can go color of var. Also, VS Code gives me those suggestions, which is nice. All right, but I'm going to use the variable. All right, so now they're gray. Cool. And then let's see here. We also want to add some padding to them so that they're spaced out a little bit. So with that, we're just going to go padding of zero and then 10 pixels on the X. Save that. And there we go. Now they're spaced out a little bit better. Uh, why is it not centered? Um, that must be something else in here for that. Something with logo container, I'm guessing. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So since it's inside logo container, I can actually open up both of these at once. Uh, let me open up. Yeah. So logo container is right here, this div. So over here, we also need to grab that logo container and then like center it. So we're going to go dot logo container. And we want display flex on that so that we can center it. All right. So flex and then align items of center. And I think that should fix it. Yeah, there we go. So now it is like that. Yeah, it should look like this. It would be done with this nav bar flex direction column. Like I thought that would cause it to do that, be in a column. Oh, that's because I only have this logo container around everything. That's why I need to move this div just around the span and save that. Now it's like how I want it. There we go. All right, beautiful. Now, now this classic books uh, needs to be bigger. So let's do that. And I do that with what the product class. So I'll go down here and I'll go to the product. And then inside of that, we want, uh, what do we want? Font size to be 25 pixels. Yeah, all right. Save that. Now it's much bigger. Nice. And then we're going to have margin left on it of 10 pixels, just so that it gets a little bit further away from the book logo. And then we want font weight of 700. Make it bold. Awesome. And then also we want a different font family. And this font family, we actually have to go get. Uh, it's going to be Montserrat which nothing happens right now because we don't have it. So we're going to go grab that from Google Fonts. All right, so you just type in Google Fonts. should be like the first link that shows up. And we need what Montserrat. So here's Montserrat. And we can go down and basically shop for these. So 
I want the regular or medium 500 and I also want 700. So bold 700. So add those two and then we can view selected families up here. And then we can import them with this link. All right, so we have Montserrat right there. There is actually one other uh, font that I want and that is called Francis. So I can actually just go back to fonts and keep shopping. Like this still will hold in here. And let's go with Francis, Frown, something like that, yeah. So I want this font as well. So now I can go down here and I, I want just 500 on this one. So let's grab medium 500, add that. And now we have both of those. So we have Francis and Montserrat and I can uh, grab that. Actually, can't even see that, can you? Yeah, Francis and then Montserrat. So that's what I'm copying. So give me that and all that link right there, copy it. And then I need to go back to my code. Uh, which one is it? This one. All right. So inside of our index.html uh, at the top, we just add this links, these links up here, save that. And then now we have this pre-connect stuff, which I guess maybe makes it faster. But the main one is this link here for the uh, Francis family and Montserrat. So now uh, we should have a different font. So it does look like that's a different font, if I'm not mistaken. So let's see here. If I comment this out and save it. Yep. So it is definitely a different font, and it looks pretty cool. Awesome. All right. So there is our header. Now we need to make the body pale. I think that would be good. So in the styles.css, we're just going to add another variable and it's going to be called pale, pale, and that's going to be HSL of 32, uh, 37% and 92%. All right, there we go. So save that. And then inside of our body, I'm just going to grab our body. Now we're going to make our background color be that pale color. So we're going to go var dash dash pale. And there we go. Save that. And now we have a beautiful pale background and then our header at the top, which is what we want. All right. So now we want to work on some of the that email stuff. So I suppose we should do that email first. So beautifully written masterpieces, enter your email and get started. Let's do that part. And we can do that easily uh, first by adding a section. So underneath the header, but still inside the body, we're going to add a section. And it's going to have an ID of um, email section, section, like so. And then we're going to have an H2, which says beautifully written masterpieces. I'm just going to actually copy this off of this one. Come on, come here. I don't know why it's doing that. Just give me this one. Copy, paste, all right, beautifully written masterpieces. And then we need underneath that a form with an ID of form, hashtag form. And then the action, we actually do need an action for it because FreeCodeCamp requires it. So if I go to info and I look at some of these, see when you click the submit element, the email submitted to static page, this one. So I just need to copy this part and put that in action. So there we go. And now that should pass that test uh, when it gets submitted. I just got to add the submit button and the inputs. So let's see here. Here's the input. Uh, it's of type email. So we're going to go input and it's going to be of type email. And we also need it required. And let's see here. What else do we need? Uh, we need placeholder text. So placeholder equals uh, enter your email address email address and then the type oh, and I already did type uh, name has to be email as well for the test so name is email all right save that I think we also need an ID on this yep so we you know ID equals email as well all right save that and then underneath that we need an input of type submit this time and we're gonna make it look like a button so we're gonna go input hashtag submit uh, so that gives an ID of submit and the type is going to be submit as well. And then 
let's see here, what else do we need? We need a value of get started. So that will be actually what shows up on the button, get started. So that is awesome. All right, so let's see what we have now. And it's not showing up because I need a bunch of margins on top. Since this is fixed, it's covering it up. So that's kind of annoying. So let's go to styles.css and fix that. All right. So to fix that, I'm going to first like uh, go down here and go section because we're using section on that and we need to add a margin of 40 pixels on top and 20 pixels on the Y. Hopefully that fixes it. Kind of does. It pushes it down a little bit. Uh, but we actually have this other CSS trick that will push it down further and it will also make our links work a little better. Uh, so we're going to go section of before. And then we're going to uh, give it a display of block. We're going to go content of space. And then we're going to go margin top of negative 100 pixels. And we're going to go height of 100 pixels and visibility hidden. And then also pointer events none. Although actually, I don't think, yeah, that never, that doesn't actually do anything. <laughs> uh, what I actually need to do is grab our email section and just push it down a lot. Okay, so, <laughs> okay, we'll go email section. So we'll grab that email section and then we just have to go margin top on it. Push it down 100 pixels. There we go. Now we can see it. Isn't it so beautiful? It's amazing. Okay. Okay, and then our section, we actually also want the text align center on it so that it will be centered. There we go. Beautiful. Now it's centered. Now we want to change the uh, font of this, I think, as well as change this uh, get started and input. All right, so let's see here. We can grab the input with just the simple input selector, like so. And we're going to go padding of eight pixels. And we'll go border radius, we'll give it a nice round edge to it. Border radius of five pixels. And then also we want a border on it. That is one pixel solid and then var green, but we need to make that variable right now. All right, so up here, here we go dash dash green. And then this will be an HSL value as well. And let's see here, what's is it? It's 158. 36% and 37%. Save that, and there we go. Now we have a beautiful green border on that and on the other input, but we want to change that other input a little bit more. And we can grab it with our hashtag submit, I think. Let's see here. Yeah. All right, so under here, we're gonna go hashtag submit to grab that button. And we'll go background color of green, that uh, green. So we'll go var dash dash green, like so. Now it's green, awesome. And then we need the color to be var of white, dash dash white. All right, there we go. Now we can see that clearly. And also, right now when I hover over it, uh, it's not giving me a pointer. So we can just change that with cursor pointer, save that. And now I get a pointer when I hover over it. Awesome. Okay. So it looks a lot better. Uh, this top part, what is that? Oh, this is just an H2. Okay, let's uh, fix the H2s. Let's see here. I can do that with just grabbing H2. So do that. And then we need font family, uh, Francis. So we're gonna go front, Francis. And I think that will change the font. Nice, it does. All right, and then we just want to add a little bit of margin bottom to it of 10 pixels to space those out a little bit. Sweet. So now that should look exactly like this one. And I think it is pretty dang close. For some reason, this one is still out like that. Oh, that's probably because of the, the media queries. I haven't added those on this one yet. All right. Now we need to add those icons as well as uh, this text here. So let's do that. Inside of our HTML, we need another section. And the section is going to be an ID of features. So we'll go section, hashtag features. 
like so. And then inside of there, we're going to have three divs with a, a class of feature each. So we're going to have feature times three. So we need three of these. Uh, but yeah. And then also within these divs, we're going to have icons. And these icons are going to come from remix icons. I think the one they use are font awesome icons, but font awesome is kind of a pain to use right now. So instead, we're going to use remix icons. I think I can just look it up. Hopefully it opens up remix icons. And then let's see, how, how do I use this? Get started. Uh, let's see, you're helping this up bigger. Get started. You just go to their GitHub and then look for their CDN. So right here, CDN, copy the following code, add it to the head tag of your HTML document. That's what we want. So I can just copy that and go back to my, uh, my page. Let's move this over again. All right. So back up inside those, these links, we just need to add remix icons in there and now we can use their remix icon set. So back in here, we can search for a bunch of different icons. I think the ones I used were like paper or something. And yeah, like one of these, like file paper. So you can click on that and just copy, and then it will, you know, copy that for you. So inside of here, I did that for uh, file paper fill. File, file paper fill, I did it for. Yeah, so this one, yeah. So I can copy that and add it here. So there we go. And if I save that, it should show up. Uh, not that. Yeah, there we go. There's our beautiful icon. So sweet. So that's how we can add icons. We can also change the look of them. So we can make them bigger with uh, ROI of 4X. So that will make it a lot bigger. And then we can add some custom uh, stuff to it just by adding icon. Although I just have to go up in here and go dot icon and then make it a ground color of the green. And that's what we use. So we want var of dash dash green. All right, save that. And now it's green in the background. Uh, <laughs> it actually has to be color because it's the actual thing. There we go. So now it's that green color. All right, so that's kind of the gist of doing this. And then I'm just going to like copy this whole section over because otherwise it's going to take too long for me to type this out. So let me just grab all these all of this and then you can take a look at the code all right so here we go if i save and it should all show up like that all right so we have section id features and then we have one feature two feature three feature and then we have file paper fill we have a uh, truck fill and we have our i book open line like so and then inside of there we just have uh, another div with the h2 and the p tag div with h2 p tag div h2 p tag so kind of repetitive there, but uh, it's amazing, actually. And then, uh, yeah, so there's not much styling on this yet because we need to, what, like justify it to the left and like stack it like this. So I'm going to do that now. So back inside of our styles at CSS, we just have to grab our features okay, with hashtag features. And we can go display flex on that. Uh, if you can't tell, I really like to use Flexbox. Uh, <laughs> we can go align item center and justify items of center as well. Justify content. Whoops. Justify content center. All right. Save that. And there we go. Now it looks like that. Uh, now we need margin as well. So margin of 20 pixels. And then we need a font family of Montserrat font. There, let's save that. There we go. So cool, cool fonts. And then we can grab our feature. So each of these features. So these are all three of them. And we want display flex on these as well. So that we can change the, uh, so that the icon will be on the left side. All right. So we also want to align items of center. There we go. Now they're on the left side. We want justify content of center we want wait no 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 on features some of this has to go down actually uh features should just be text line 
<laughs> Actually, all this stuff needs to go in where feature is, and then uh, we can get rid of all this stuff in features. And it should actually be just text align left and max width of 800 pixels, and then also margin of auto so that it centers. All right, save that. Now it looks beautiful. Okay, cool. <laughs> Oops, my bad, my bad. Anyways, so that's looking good. There is a little bit, there should be more space in between these, which is kind of annoying. Uh, I wonder why that is. Let me take a look here. Oh, that's why. So these icons have a little bit of margin right on them as well. So we're just gonna add margin right to them. So right here, they're super tight. And we can just go margin right of 30 pixels. And that will move that stuff over. Sweet. All righty. Now the next section we need is the YouTube video. So here I grabbed How to Win Friends and Influence uh, People, the audiobook, and I can just look that up on YouTube. Um, so yeah, let's just do that. Let's go YouTube, How to Win Friends and Influence People, audiobook. And then right here, if I click on this, it will start playing, but I need to pause this to make sure it doesn't uh, like play. <laughs> okay. And then under share, all there is, there's this embed and we just want this iframe. So uh, all this is fine. Just grab the iframe, copy it, and we can just add that to our index.html and it will be in its own section, but I'm just gonna paste it uh, for now. And then it should show up, so. Uh, there it is. Beautiful. That's all we had to do. Uh, I did uh, change the width and weight a little bit, so I'm going to also do that. All right, so this section is just going to be called audio. So section, hashtag audio. To get that section, let's wrap it around there and save it. Format, nice. And then it's also centered because section is centered. And then we need the ID to be video. So we're going to go ID equals uh, video. I think this is also for the test. And then the width, I'm going to get rid of the width for now. And it might disappear. Oh, actually, it just gets super small. And I'm going to make the height 400. Just make it a little bigger. Um, but I'm going to use this video ID to make the width change based on the width of the screen. So inside styles, we're going to go hashtag video. And we're going to change the width of it. And the width is going to be 100%. All right, so width 100%. Save that, and now it will take up that full section. Sweet. So that's looking good. And then we need to grab our products. So this is probably the more complicated part of this project, uh, doing the products part. So this for sale thing, and then these cards. So let's do that now. So we're going to do a section of for sale so that we can scroll down to it with the link. All right, so we're going to go section of hashtag for sale. And then inside of here, we're going to have our H2 for sale just to, to label them. And then inside of there, we're going to have three cards. So we're going to go uh, uh, book one, book two, book three. Uh, but I'm just going to do div hashtag product product cards so we're going to go product cards so this is the wrapper around all the books yeah okay so div product cards and then inside of there we're going to have another div of class card so we're going to go div dot card actually this should be a class not an id class of product cards and then this is class of card and we need three of these so alt shift down to copy them and then inside of each of these we're going to have this image uh, but we're going to be doing that in css so inside of that is this div with a class of product image so product image uh, spelt out and then also product one like so all right and that's going to be empty we're just going to add the image to it in our CSS and give it a height and width. So that's fine how it is. 
uh, but also inside of this card. So underneath that, we're going to have a div of class inner card. And we're going to have a div of class author. So div dot author. All right. And then underneath the author is a class of an H1 of class header. So H1 dot header. And then that's going to be the title of the book. So how to win friends and influence people can be that. And then also Dale Carnegie would be on top right here, Dale Carnegie. Oh man, there we go. So there we go. And then we can change the styling in the CSS, but that's how it's kind of formatted. And then underneath that, we have our P for content, uh, P with a class of content. I'm going to actually copy a bunch of this stuff over. So, uh, but this is kind of the general structure of it. I'm just showing you the structure. So the content is this uh, little summary of it. And then underneath that, we have a div with a class of flex. So div.flex. And inside of here, we have uh, two paragraphs for our, our prices. The first P is a uh, main price. And then the second one is a P of old price. So we're going to P dot old price like so. All right. And then underneath that, we have this add to cart button. So we'll go down here and we'll go button dot add. And then inside there, we're going to have a P uh, add to carts. Actually, we can just do add to cart here, add to cart. And that's all it is. All right. Yeah. Let's see if anything shows up really on this. Uh, not really much. <laughs> because I didn't add uh, the the image or anything, all the CSS. Uh, so, I'm, okay, so I'm just going to, let's just do the first one for now. Yeah, let's just do the first one for now. So I'll grab, <clears throat> yeah, I'll grab Dale Carnegie here, uh, how to win friends and influence people. And I'll replace this card here. Paste that. I think I did that wrong. I need the whole card. Give me the whole card. And let's replace this again. Paste. All right, save that. There we go. There's our card. Now in the CSS, this is where the big difference happens. Um, also, I should put myself on top maybe so that you can see that. All right, let's go to the CSS. So we're going to go dot product image. Image like so. And then we're going to give it a width of 100% and a margin of auto and a height of 500 pixels. And if I save that, it should yeah, give it a bunch of space for that, for that photo to be in there. To add the actual photo, we're going to do dot product one. And then inside product one, we're going to have a background image. And then we can grab our URL and add the image to it. So the image, I just, Again, I grabbed it off of like Google Google Pictures, and then I open it up in a new tab, and I can just copy the URL directly, and then it should show up. There we go. How to win friends and influence people. You'll see that it is not looking very good right now, and that is because we need to add a few things to this. So first thing is a background repeat. So we're going to go background repeat of no repeat and then we're going to go background size of cover cover and also yeah that's it for that uh we also want to add a border radius and a border so we're going to go border of one pixel solid text so we're going to go one pixel solid uh, var of text all right, and then that border radius as well to round out the corners, just to make it look a little bit modern. So we're gonna go 10 pixels, 10 pixels, zero and zero. And that will round out the top two corners like so. Okay, so if I make this smaller, it will look a lot better. There we go. Now more of his face is showing up, <laughs> but yeah. Okay, so now we need the bottom half of the card. And we can grab the card with dot card. And the card is going to have a background color. Background color. 
of that white, I think. So yeah, var of dash dash white. Save that. So that already made a pretty big difference. And we just have to add a border radius of 10 pixels. We need a width of 90% and a margin of auto and a margin bottom of 10 pixels just to space them out. Save that. There we go. Dale Carnegie's looking mighty fine. And then we need our inner card. So we're going to grab a dot inner card. Inner card. So the inner card portion is this bottom portion down here only. And inside there, we're going to go display of flex. We are going to have flex direction of column. We are going to have a justify content of space around and a padding of 10 pixels. And the padding should make a big difference. There we go. So that looks a little bit nicer. We also need to grab the content and change the fonts. So we're going to go dot content. And we're going to give it a font family of Montserrat. Montserrat. Save that. Sweet. And then we also need to change the color to be that text color. So we're going to go var dash dash text again. And a margin bottom of 10 pixels. All right, save that. Here we go. So that's a beautiful paragraph now. We're going to grab our flex. Um, class and we're going to give it, just give it a display flex and align item center and a margin bottom as well of 10 pixels same thing all right save that there we go so now our prices are over to the left uh, to make those prices look a lot better we need the main price class and the old price class so we're going to go dot main price Main price has a margin right on it of 20 pixels. It has a font size of 30 pixels. And it has a font family of that Francis uh, one. So Francis. And then it also has a color of green. So we're going to go uh, this green color. But instead of doing that, we're going to grab var dash dash green. All right, save that. And there's our beautiful 1612. And then now we're going to grab our 1929. So that's done with dot old price, old price, like so. And we need text decoration of line through. We need a color to make it that text color, which is that gray. So we're going to go var dash dash text. Save that. Now it has a strike through to, through it uh, to make this Dale Carnegie text look a lot better. Uh, it's not too bad. Okay, I do that with dot author. So let's grab that. So dot author. And let's give it a font family of Montserrat. First of all, Montserrat. Save that. Sweet. That worked. And then we should also add fallbacks to it, but uh, for some reason I'm not doing that. Okay, letter spacing will actually space out the characters. And this is what makes the biggest difference for that. Yeah, so now it's uh, spaced out nicely. We also need to give it a color of that text color, var dash dash text. And we need a text transform of uppercase, just uh, cause it to be uppercase. Cool. Uppercase. Sweet. Save that. There we go. Now Dale Carnegie is uppercase, and it looks quite good. All right. So now we want this header, and I think that's just done with dot header is what I did for that. Dot header. We'll grab that part of it. And this header is also font family of Francis. Uh, Francis. And then it has a margin of 10 pixels, zero. And a color of header text. So I don't think we have the header text yet. Uh, but the header text is uh, like a dark, a very dark gray. So let's just add that up here. Paste that, save that. It's 212, 21%, 14%. Uh, go back down and let's use that color. So var dash dash header text. Save that. And it didn't really change much, but it does 
maybe do a little bit <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah, now we just have to change this button. Uh, this button is, uh, what is it? I did a class of add. So I think we can just grab it with dot add. And let's see what we have on there. Oh, lots of different stuff on this one. All right, so first of all, we need the background color to be green. So we'll go background color. Background color to be var dash dash green. All right, that'll make it green. Sweet. And then we need, uh, let's see here, cursor pointer. We need adding a 15 pixels. That should change it quite a bit. Yep. And then we need border of none. None. Get rid of that border. Ugly border. And then we can go border radius. Round out the edges of 10 pixels. Save that. And then we need a width of 100%. And we need a color of far white so that the text is white. Sweet. And then we need a font family of Montserrat's. Aunt Serret. Save that. It's looking good. And then we need font weight of bold. So it'd be 700. The one that we shopped for before. <laughs> and then display flex. Display flex. And align item center, justify content center, which it is already centered, so I don't think I need that. Uh, but we do want margin bottom of 10 pixels. All right. So Let's get rid of display flex. I don't think I need that. There we go. A beautiful add to cart button. And now we can start doing, uh, let's, let's first add our other two images in here. So the other two images I can grab uh, product two and product three. So I'm going to put that next to the product one. So these are not being shown yet because it's I don't have them in our HTML, but it's going to be the Rich Dad and Poor Dad book and Atomic Habits. So let's see here. I need to replace these two cards. Let me just copy, copy and paste that since you guys know the system now. So let's grab book two and book three. Uh, let's see here. What div is it? <laughs> I think it's this one. Copy, replace these two, paste, save. And it looks like it works correctly. Awesome. So yeah, I just added those two very easily. And now they're showing up. So that's awesome. All right, so we did it for mobile. Now, what if we change the size of this? Don't we want it to change? And the answer to that is yes, of course. So we can do that with media queries. Yay, yay. Don't you love media queries? All right, so our first media query is going to be at media. Uh, screen only for like only screen. So we're going to go only screen and, and then we're going to grab our min width. And the only thing, uh, this one is just 600 pixels. We're just going to change the, um, the nav bar. Yeah. All right. So hashtag nav bar. And we just want to make a, a flex direction of row, row like so. All right. So there we go. Now it's in a row. All right, so because it's greater than 600 pixels. All right, the next media query, we're going to be doing something cool. All right, so we're going to start it off the same. Media only screen and, but this time for the width, we're going to go between two values. So we're going to have 450 pixels less than width, less than 600 pixels. So now when the width is between 450 and 600 pixels, this is what we want it to do. And what do we want it to do? We want the card to be font size of 0 0.85 rem. And then also for the product image, dot product image, we want its height to be reduced to 400 pixels. All right, save that. I don't think anything will change yet because I think it's, oh, well, actually it is. Is it between 450 and 600? Might be, maybe now it is. But yeah, that's what happens there. Now we want to add another one like this, except it's just going to be when it's greater or less than or equal to 450 pixels. So just like that. And this one is going to be card. We want display flex on it. 
and then also max width to be different. Max width of 525 pixels. And then we're going to grab the inner card. So we're going to go dot inner card. And this one is going to have a width of 300 pixels and a padding of 20 pixels. And the product image will have a width, width of 400 pixels and a border radius of 10 pixels, 0, 0, and 10 pixels so that it's on the left side. Yeah, look at that. So Display Flex makes it into a row again. And now it looks like this. So it looks a lot better than it did before. But if we make it like super small, then it will be a column again. Uh, let's see here if I can make this bigger and then just like make it super small because it should be a row if it's, uh, yeah, there we go. So then it gets turned into a row if it's like a super skinny mobile screen, but as soon as you make it a little bit bigger, then it will be in these uh, two column layout basically for the image and the text around it. So I, I like that. I think it looks, I think it looks great. All right, let's see here in this one. Yep. All right, so we have one more media. Uh, query to go through. I'm just going to copy this one over because why not? And this is just like when the screen is bigger than a thousand pixels. We want the video to just be 70% of the width instead of 100%. And the product cards, we want to be display flex and wrap around instead of just being in one column. So let's uh, try making this bigger. Uh, it's not greater than a thousand yet. I don't think, actually, I didn't save this. If I save this, yeah, there we go. Now it wraps around. So now we have two in this column and one below and it looks really good. So that's it for this project. Uh, one last thing we have to do is we have to check and see if it free code camp accepts it. And hopefully it does. If it doesn't, then I need to fix it. So let's see here. Let's grab our stuff. So Let's actually just go to code index to HTML right here. Let's grab all this, control all, control A, and then control C, paste it in here. And then styles.css, do the same thing. Control A, control C, control V. And then now it should show up basically how we had it. The preview looks good. And now for the moment of truth, let's open this up and let's see if it passes all these tests. So run the test and it does look at that. So there we go. We completed the product landing page. Oh, one other thing uh, that's pretty important that I forgot is adding the smooth scroll on this. So we can just do that with uh, scroll behavior, uh, smooth. And then now when we scroll, it should be smooth. Uh, maybe not with the fudge. Come on, breath. Why is that not working? Maybe I have to open it up again. Or maybe it's this one. Yeah, there we go. So now when I click on these, it is a smooth scroll. The next thing we have up is going to be the learn CSS animation by building a Ferris wheel. Uh, looks like there's only 29 uh, problems. So it should be a shorter video, which is uh, good news for me because <laughs> uh, the product landing page was, it was definitely fun and I, I'm proud of uh, this project. So anyways, thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day. And make sure to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you later.